Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Batobi here, and as you can probably tell by my face, I am completely exhausted. It has been a busy, busy week, Sinnoh week, a new video every day this week to celebrate the release of Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. I hope you've been having fun. I'm filming this a little bit ahead of time, so I hope I've been having fun. When the first trailer of these games came out, I'll be honest, I wasn't sure. Then the second trailer came out and I thought, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm feeling it. This is gonna be really good. But of course, I am most excited for Legends Arceus, which is the next thing on the horizon. And of course, there will be an Arceus week, but we'll get to that. In the meantime, starting next week, the schedule should start to return a little bit more to normal. Two videos a week, maybe three videos a week next week. And of course, the return of Pokemon Tempest. That'll be coming back uh, weekly, Fake Mon Friday. But of course, we're only on episode 11. You know, we're halfway through the series. There's not 10 weeks till the end of the year, and I would like the series to be complete by the end of the year. So episode frequency might increase towards the end, but you will have to wait and see for that. Oh, I want to talk about something that's been on my mind for maybe 15 years, and it's going to be a much more relaxed, conversational type video with you today. Of course, you can still leave a comment with the chance to win a copy of Legends Arceus. I've been doing that giveaway. Uh, you leave a comment as well by giveaway, giving away three copies when Legends Arceus comes out. But the conversational video is about this. The idea that Generation 4, Diamond and Pearl, really marked the end in some ways for Pokemon, the end of a chapter that I, I just want to talk about it. Because Pokemon, I don't know, maybe really changed after that. And I'd just be interested to get your thoughts about it in the comments down below. Also, I hope you've been doing all the lovely things that I've been telling you to do the like button. I'm sure the like button's been appreciating it. Uh, and yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so yes, much more low energy video today. Generation one of Pokemon, Pokemania, it was a new thing. No one knew that it was going to be the gr biggest grossing media franchise ever of all time, but it was a fad, it was exciting. Everyone loved Pokemon, Pokemon was everywhere. Bed sheets, cereal boxes, it was on the playground and it was on TV and it was in trading cards, it was everywhere. So much so that there wasn't a world where the business-minded people at Nintendo wouldn't go, well, of course you have to make a sequel. And there were plenty of Pokemon that Game Freak wanted to do. There was more that they could do with the idea. And they really developed Gold and Silver not so much as Generation 2, but as sequel to Red, Blue, and Yellow. You see this in the fact that so many of the gym leaders' Pokemon are like Gen 1 Pokemon, um, that so many of the Pokemon that appear in Johto are evolutions of Gen 1 Pokemon. Of course, the post game where you go back to Kanto takes you back to fight yourself. Red, the player character. I really think that Generation 2 is the sequel and ultimately I think what they intended to be the end of Pokemon, but that wouldn't last for long because of course this was a big cash cow that was still making money well into the early 2000s. They were not going to stop there, and so they made Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. And with Ruby and Sapphire, there is a very clean cut between the Game Boy Color era and the Game Boy Advance era, where they introduce these new mechanics like double battling, and you've got the GameCube games coming out to complement these games. And then they're talking about doing remakes for Fire and Leaf Green. There's a very big difference, I think, between the original era, those first six games, Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal, and then everything that came after. Given that a lot of the Johto Pokemon were catchable in Fire Red, Leaf Green and Colosseum and Gale of Darkness, and of course all the Gen 1 Pokemon were available in Fire Red and Leaf Green, it still felt like a very complete package at that point, and everything was slowly building up. Legendary Pokemon like Mewtwo at first were just obscure dungeon bosses. Then, as of the time of Generation 2, it's that sequel, we're seeing the return of Team Rocket, ho and Lugia are still very out of the way dungeon boss level Pokemon. But then in Gen 3, Groudon and Kyogre are front and center. They become part of the story. These Pokemon are now not just like big beast destroying Pokemon, but they're world ending Pokemon. And then finally, you get to Generation 4, where we have gods of time and space, god level Pokemon. It really ramps up slowly but surely. And Generation 4 loops back round to Generation 2 with Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which is already a sequel to Generation 1. And something about it, you know, th at that time you have 490 something Pokemon, nearly 500 Pokemon. It felt like a very manageable amount of Pokemon to capture between all your various copies of the game. If you had a Nintendo DS system with a Game Boy Advance slot between um, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Colosseum, Gale of Darkness, Battle Revolution, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, and Heart Gold and Soul Silver, it felt still like one very complete Pokemon experience. I don't know how to describe it, but it was all following a very linear narrative where the only real break was the break from Gen 2 to Gen 3, but that sort of got fixed very quickly with Fire Red and Leaf Green. Then came Generation 5, Pokemon Black and White. 
We've gone from colors in red and blue to gold and silver, which are like the cool colors if you're a kid, you know, they're shiny. And then, you know, we've got ruby and sapphire, so we're really into the gemstones, and then diamond, pearl, and platinum, still into those gemstones. Um, but now we're going back to black and white shades, colors, more simplified games. And the big bosses of these games, Zekrom and Reshiram, they're no longer like time-space gods, they're just legendary Pokemon of the region. And there's a Pokedex of just over 150 Pokemon, which is, you know, hadn't happened since Generation 1, it was very reminiscent of Generation 1. In fact, lots of the Pokemon and the tropes that appear in this game are just Generation 1 reskins, let's be real. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, and the only Pokemon that you could find in Unova right away were the Unovan Pokemon. It wasn't until Black and White 2, which is obviously a sequel game, where uh, you could start encountering all the Pokemon again. Black and White really is a soft reset, and I think Pokemon needed that after Generation 4, because where do you go from time space gods? You know, you, you have to come back down to Earth and just tell a story about these amazing magical creatures that live in the Pokemon world. I do think the direction they went with Black and White makes total sense, and people still herald Black and White and Black and White 2 to this day to be some of the best Pokemon games. And again, it was that evolution of Sprite Art, so it was really the best that Sprite Heart had to offer, although I know there is some debate about whether actually Platinum and Hot Soul Silver look better than Black and White 2. I, I, I don't mind either way. But even the Pokemon anime felt like it kind of went through a little bit of a soft reboot in Generation 5. Ash's skills continue to get better and better and better uh, until the end of the Sinnoh arc, where his team feels really strong and he loses to a legendary Pokemon. And then black and white, you you know, you get the whole, Ash Ketchum is a 10-year-old from Pallet Town, and it's just like episode one again, and he's adventuring off with Pikachu, and his Pikachu's not very strong, it can't be a Snivy, that kind of thing. Everything just felt like it was starting again. And that's not the end of the world. I actually, again, I think Pokemon needed this to separate the kind of original to the modern. But then Pokemon X and Y happened. And Pokemon X and Y is in many ways just like Generation 1 again. And I know that's gonna sound weird. You can choose one of the Kanto starters to join your team again, and Mega Evolution affects a lot of the original Kanto Pokemon. You start off going through a forest which is almost identical to Viridian Forest. I don't know why, but I just remember thinking at the time that X and Y also felt like it was kind of a renewal of Pokemon, and that made sense because this was the first time stepping into the 3D space, so they wanted to kind of, I don't know, restart here. But it felt kind of weird that X and Y doesn't really feel like in any way a sequel to Black and White or Black and White 2. It doesn't feel like the natural evolution of, but it also doesn't feel so distinctly different in the way that Hoenn did to uh, Gold and Silver. It just sort of becomes the case that Black and white and black and white 2 are their own generation and x and y are their own generation and then of course there's omega ruby and alpha sapphire that become part of that and then sun and moon rolled around which in some ways does feel like a sequel to x y covering the zygarde story that was never really finished and we see a lot of characters come back and there's still mega evolution in it but also sun and moon in other ways feels entirely disconnected from x and y uh, and I, I don't know how to describe what i'm saying i, I said this was going to be a very conversationally rambly video. It just feels like generations 1, 2, 3, and 4 flow into each other and are part of this big ecosystem of games at the time that Heart Gold and Soul Silver had come out and, you know, everything was accessible within just the two generations. But after that, I think everything feels quite separate. Black and White and Black and White 2 are one chunk, X and Y and Auras are another chunk, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are another chunk, and now Sword and Shield is its own thing with, I guess, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. None of them feel complementary to each other. They almost feel more individual. And that's fine. I don't particularly hate any one of these games or any one of these generations or the way that they integrate with each other. Again, maybe this is all just me. Maybe this all just feels very rambly. I just feel like there was this very natural buildup from Generations 1 to Generations 4 that doesn't really exist in the same way in uh, all of the modern games, I guess. And that soft reset in Generation 5 doesn't feel like it carried through to the later games. It sort of feels like they're all the soft reset. And then Let's Go again adds to the confusion of that a little bit because that was designed to get in Gen 1 fans from Pokemon Go. So there's not this uh, kind of the same cohesion between the later games. I wonder if there's an alternate universe where after Hot Gold, Soul Silver, and Platinum, where Pokemon just said, we're just gonna take a couple of years. And it's you know, a good thing that they didn't. Biggest grossing media franchise, so much money that they would have lost out on not doing what they did. 
I'm entirely talking from an artistic kind of point of view. I wonder if there's a world, and I really like Black and White and Black and White 2, where if they just removed those games or incorporated many of the traits and tropes of those games into X and Y and moved to the 3DS, you know, right away, if that would have helped create a separation between the original stuff, the first four generations, and then everything that came after that would feel like it's kind of its own next gen Pokemon thing. And then by now we would be talking about moving on to the next stage of Pokemon's life, which I guess would start with like Legends Arceus, for example. Maybe we'd be looking at like these, in the same way that you think of gen one, two, and three, you'd be thinking of group one, two, and now moving on to three. Hey Pokemon Masters, Future Toby here, and while editing this, I'm realizing that maybe a big part of this as well is what the consoles are capable of. The original Nintendo DS and DS Lite had a Game Boy Advance slot, so those Game Boy Advance games that covered Generations 1 and 3, as well as the Nintendo DS games that covered Generations 2 and 4, felt like one whole. You could play all of those games on the exact same Nintendo DS and transfer between them all on the exact same Nintendo DS. But then with Black and White and Black and White 2, it's clear that they went for a soft reset. But then comes X and Y, and X and Y doesn't have a sort of very direct connection to Black and White or Black and White 2. Instead, they introduced Pokemon Bank. And absolutely, you could battle and trade between X and Y and Auras, but then came Sun and Moon, Sun and Ultra Moon, and it just kind of felt like, oh no, X and Y is last generation. There's no compatibility and cohesion here other than Pokemon Bank, and that's sort of become the new standard. Sword and Shield and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are both on the Nintendo Switch, but they don't feel like two parts of a greater whole, the only compatibility being the gift Gigantamax Eevee and Gigantamax Pikachu. Instead, it feels more like Let's Go is an extension of Pokemon Go, and that they are two parts of a greater whole. And with Sword and Shield and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl being very different styles, again, they just feel a little bit separate. What am I talking about? I don't know. It's been a really long week. It's just some food for thought, I guess. And I'd be really interested in reading your comments on this. I hope you are enjoying Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Um, I hope I'm enjoying Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Whatever the future of Pokemon holds for us, I'm excited because no matter where I've been on this journey, whether it was back in Pokemania in the early 2000s or whether it was when Ruby and Sapphire came out, whether it was when the original Diamond Pearl came out or when I was in college and I was going and running to game to get my copy of Black and White or then after that at university being so excited about Mega Evolution when X and Y came out or doing Sun and Moon for the first time here on the YouTube channel and now we're all the way along Galar where I got to see my home region and now Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. I've been excited every step along the way and I've really been enjoying this. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's next and especially with Legends Arceus, which looks to be my dream Pokemon game. I think maybe I'm just a little bit tired. It's been a long week. Thank you for supporting me though. Thank you for being down in the comments. Thank you for treating the like button so nicely as I've been asking you all to do all week. Thank you to anyone who's been supporting me, whether that's on Patreon or checking out my merch store, which is linked in the description. You can check out any of my merch. I hope you're looking forward to what's coming next. Happy Sinnoh week and of course, so high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. I still just can't get over how much love this channel has. Thank you for the support of my patrons and especially the big patrons of the month. JD Gottlich, Michael Horn, Chupoki Atmos, Stefan Peters, Pokey Bliss, and Jed Rubin. Thank you.